everybody. Okay, I'm returning to, this is Corporal Kendall returning to episode 3 of Dominions 5 as Nefel Heim on Impossible versus um, 15 AI. I'm setting the clock to 30. Okay, okay that was set it to 30. We're going to go back to full screen mode. Full screen mode, alt, enter. Okay, so we're back on full screen mode. Wow! <laughs> okay, we just processed the turn, and I'm just now taking a look at this. Look at this unbelievable army right here. Okay, so um, um, I, I just ran it, it up to turn two. See right here, it says late spring in year zero. It started in spring, so now we're going to late spring. Um, well, there's only one over here. Very interesting. Nine enemy of the army because it's mainly fantastic. Wow. Well, that's interesting. It almost looks like a, uh, a trap, doesn't it? It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Okay, so we ran one turn. Did I get, um, I don't think I got my, those mercs, did I? Because of my final A, Bowser. Because I remember I, I tried to, let's look at the, um, oh, I read messages, a proclamation, Michi Niflheim. Oh, I just, did I just put in for that this turn? Um, mercs, where are because I'm not seeing those those mercs. Let me go to the army setup. I'm not seeing them. That's weird. I could have sworn I put in for those. Maybe I didn't get. Maybe I didn't get them. 427. Uh, it didn't give me a um. Victor's villains. Oh, okay. Here we go. The employer. This guy. See, there's three months left of employment. Okay, these guys got them. Um, oh, who were they? Was that is that Lanka? I think that's Lanka. So I was outbid. They got them. Somebody got Victor's, um, Victor's villains for three turns, and I think it's Lanka. So we got another guy. We got Mercorner's green men. They commenced 25 men. What's 187, 150 for employment of most other nations. Okay, I'm not going to worry about them. Frankly, I really don't. I've, I haven't used them a whole lot, but they c certainly can be useful early. I, I want to get a um, my rush strategy going. Notice that I didn't, I'm not going to be, remember, I ramped up these independents really strongly. So we're looking at bigger armies on all these, all these areas. All these areas that have white flags are independents. By the way, I'm only being able to see some of them. The, the, this area right here that's outlined is where my dominion controls. And why these other areas I'm able to see because I'm not sure why I can see these. I always thought that you could only see the areas that were in your dominion. Maybe because it's in winter. My dominion is, well, if I left click on that, is it's cold. This one's cold. These guys aren't. Remember, remember what I said is really tough when you want to attack provinces. I'm not always going to have the ability to attack provinces that are... Um, just always cold. I mean, it's just not going to happen, especially in um, summer. What my strategic goal is here in the first year, I want to be able to conquer all the areas around my, my province and, and maybe one or two others and knock this thing out. I want to be able to get this throne of ascension that's right on my border. For the second year, my ambitious goal is that I, by then I should have contacted with some of the nations around me I want to knock out, I want to do a brush blitzkrieg attack against one of my bordering major nations and take his capital. That is my, my goal. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to have an army of giants with, with, that are with a blessed strategy using all those, those blessed scales that I, that I um, took and do that. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, there was one other little thing that I wanted to point out about the bless strategy. Um, can I get to the get to my um, where it shows an overview of my guys? Uh, blah blah blah. Where does it do that? Um, uh, is it under armies? Army. Okay, army set up mercs. I'm not doing mercs. Recruit. Okay, so this. I want. I just wanted to find out where where it gives you gives you an overview of your um, nation and your blessed units. Um, is it statistics? Nation overview. I think that is that it. Okay, this is showing where all my units are. Scorecraft pretenders. Throne of Ascension. Nobody. There are no 
Thrones of Ascension, Pretenders. Those are all the Pretenders. Hall of Fame, nobody's in the Hall of Fame yet. Score graphs, there's nothing in the score graph. Nation overview. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm not sure how to get it. I'll, I'll have to look that up later on. But on all those breath bless effects, I took some of them said incarnate only, like the awe. I know that the awe effect and the... um. Oh, what was it? The one that it, that repairs my uh, my afflictions. Um, recuperation, awe, and recuperation are incarnate. That means that those two effects will only happen when my pretender is in the game. He's got to be incarnate and in the game. So I'm actually not going to get those two particular blessed benefits until 36 turns into the game when my pretender gives. But like I said, remember this is a long-term game. I'm not playing a short. It's not a micro game. It's a long-term game, so that's fine. I will have that most of the game. It's just 36 turns. It's really not that long when you're talking about large map games. And all those other effects are going to have a huge, huge effect on my, my sacred units. Okay, so like I said, these, these things, this section here is your buildings. This here is related to stuff that's related to armies, your army setup. We're going to be using that. In a minute, when, once I start recruiting more, you once I get to the point where we're ready to attack, I'm going to do go through that. Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm still, I still want to get enough you recruit some units when it, before I want to attack. Mercs, I didn't hire anybody. I covered that. So we see that this up here is stuff that's related to um, magic. We'll start with research. I have nobody on researching right now, so this is all empty. That's that is. I will go into that global enchantment. There's five global. Spells in this game, they have um, any of those you guys out there that have played Civilization, Sid Meier Civilization, know that there are wonders of the world like the pyramids that only one nation can build. Well, this game has got a version of that. They're called Global Enchantments. Only one nation in the in the game can cast that particular spell and get the benefit of that spell. In this game, it is possible to. Um, Eliminate that spell by um, dispel. There's a spell called dispel, which you can use to dispel the global enchantment and maybe put one of your own up there. I have used dispel because some of the t I, I, I hate. There's one global enchantment. What is it? Um, oh God, it's thunder and I. Uh, what is it? It just starts raining lightning down on your your nation, and all of a sudden you lose. You start losing like ten, twelve guys. Um, are affected a turn three or four dead another 10 12 get hit and wounded it really really sucks I, I go out of my way to try to dispelling that spell I hate that they can cast global chances against you a lot of them are will generate gems um, divine blessing spells like that there's one that gives you a bunch of astral spells of course the first five that go up are automatically get there for free if somebody cast um a version, another spell when there's already five, one of the spells may get bumped. It depends. It depends on how powerful. You can cast more, put more gems into enchantment to increase the likelihood that it will stay and not get dispelled or not get bumped by another another spell. Uh, so if two guys cast the same spell or try to cast the same spell, one of them is going to get past the one the guy that puts the more spell gems into it will get it and the other guy will get bumped and he'll lose all his gems he put into it so it's kind of bad to get bumped um so dispel or the other way to eliminate is to kill the mage that cast that spell so in, in the game there will be a mage that cast a global if you can somehow find that mage and kill him then the, the global enchant will disappear there are also other unique there are unique magic items in the game um they're they're in construction level eight they can only be built once unless they get destroyed it's possible for items to get destroyed in this game and then they'll then you can rebuild it again i mean it, it, it's always available or you can either available in the sense that it's on the map somewhere or or somebody built it or you know if it you can build it or if you can't build it, then it's on the map somewhere. Somebody else has built it, so you can try to get it that way in combat. You know, that's how that works. And there are some unique leaders. There are some 
some spells that can can get like ice devils. There are six ice devils in this game. All six of those are unique. So if you have one of them, as long as you have him, he's gone. Nobody else can get that ice devil. There are several really powerful, really powerful upper level um, things like that. Leaders that are that are unique that can only be gotten once in the game. Okay, so. So that's what that is. That's research, global enchantment, magic resources. So this is showing how many of your magic... These gems are very, very important. The game magic system hinges on them. Right now I'm getting plus four turn for my, my Niflheim special site. I'm getting four water and two death, but I'm not getting anything else. Blood slaves, you have to blood hunt to get them. There are a few sites in the game that give you blood. Like I think it's the arena. Is it the arena or the... Um, something like that, which gives you a couple. But usually, this is the one that has the least on the map. But but it's also the easiest to get because you can set guys to like blood hunt. You can't do that with other the other things. So in a way, they're kind of the easiest to get too. But you need a lot of blood mages to do that. <clears throat> okay, so that's all that. And then magic items. There are no magic items. You get the the most magic items that you could put. If you fill this whole thing up, you can't build any more magic items, but then you have to take them out of... So you can think of this as your magic item bank. Um, but you'll start putting them on your units, you know, so you mean, you, you're not going to really just be hoarding magic items without using them somewhere. You're going to add them, put them on your leaders. And right now, of course, I got no magic items. I haven't built anything. So that's all that is. And this section up here is just for other stuff, like if I want the options, save game... Quit without saying save game and quit. Um, become AI controlled. I don't know why I would, you know, somebody would do that. Maybe somebody that's in a multiplayer game would do that. And then it's got a section to get, you can access the manuals and stuff. <clears throat> and of course, the preference screen if you want to change the sound levels and everything else. Graphics. In in this game, if uh, since I'm on the, 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 the highest setting, I may. If the end turns start taking too long, I might take some of these um, screen re to, to reduce the amount of, um, uh, oh, what do you call it, um, processing that's used in the game to get the turns to go faster. I'm not going to worry about that now. That's just if it happens to bog down the game. Because I am, like I said, I'm on a large map. Okay, so what else do we got? Um, and then that's the interface. So that's the main... The, the main UI or user interface, and up here is your your overview of your nation, and then then this shows the province. So if you right click on a province, this is the information of that particular province. Somebody had wanted, and of course you're showing the leaders on there that are in that particular province. Those are my four leaders that are located in Niflheim. I don't have anybody anywhere else. If I had a scout out here somewhere, it would show them. Um. Somebody was complaining about the U in one of the videos. I, I don't really agree with the, with its complaint. I, I think the user interface of this is just as fine as in any other game. It's neither neither um, neither worse or any better as any. I, I just don't see it. What he was saying. Now he did have a point about some of the um, some of the little informational pop ups don't provide enough details. Like, for example, the whole thing with fatigue, that is really not, not explained enough in, in either the manual or... or um, th I had to... A lot of that information I found about fatigue and encumbrance and reinvigoration, I had to find online in, in forums when I first started playing this game. I'm like, how does that even work? I'm like... So they just... I mean, there are a lot of... The game is extraordinarily in-depth and in, in detail. A lot of things are just not haven't, um, uh, what's the word, haven't been, you can't find quick enough in the, in the, the help links on so, a lot of the details. So I'm expecting that they will fix that in time on some of the, some of the things. Okay, um, so let's get back, let's get back to it. So my strategy, like I said, the first year, I want to take over as many of the provinces around my, as I can in the second year I want to conquer in winter the second year I'm going to launch a major offensive once it gets to a winter time with a large enough army to knock out my nearest neighbor 
If I've got more than one, I will choose. Or I may have my hand forced if they declared war on me. I don't know. So I want to get a big enough army to attack. Well, probably the weakest things are going to be these two. Okay, I'm getting a scouting report right here that says, for this particular thing, it says 50 enemy units. It consists of militias, light infantry, and archers. This is probably going to be the weaker one. Um, deer tribe, I found that the deer tribe is not very, is kind of weak, in my opinion. These militias deer tribe. But I've also ramped this up to nine on the independents, so they're, they're pretty strong. Remember that. You cannot underestimate that. By the way, here you're showing the, uh, the red path because it's blocked because one of these guys is in winter and this other one is in so well it's not in summer but it's neither winter or summer but this one is in winter so it's blocked it's showing a red which means a mountain mountain path which is blocked if both of these things were in summer it would should just show a gold line like this there would be no blockage at all and it could move from here from here to here Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I want to build up a little bit more before before I attack. I don't, I just don't have enough units right now. Um, probably going to re recruit this turn and next turn and then attack. So what do we want to get? I'm going to take a couple of scouts. This is really nice that I can do two a turn. I like this about this game, which re there's another good reason why I can go with my scout warrior strategy because I can build up two of them every turn. Um, and I want to get some units. We want to get a couple of those guys. And I'm left. And I use just about all my gold. That's fine. So we'll get two. Next turn we'll get some we'll get some more units. So I'm gonna click end turn. Now um end turn and we're gonna go to, to, to turn three. This is turn one. Uh no, I'm sorry, turn two. This is turn two. We're gonna go to end turn now. Okay, so it is resolving the turn. Resolving the turn, so we got a proclamation. So, ooh, what else are we got? We're against Calum also. So, Calum are the um, flying guys. They have a nation of like, um, you know, kind of like I don't want to say angels, but guys that can fly. They they can be really really tough because they can fly behind you. I I you know they're tough in one way, but they're also kind of weak in another way. I don't like that they can fly behind you, but I've usually been able to. Well, frankly, I've been having a fairly easy time rolling over these guys, usually, if you can catch them. They're not one of the uh, more stronger nations when you compare them to Niflheim, in my opinion. Tiss! Tiss, now these are the guys that have lizard guys with um, poison. they got a lot of poison guys. I really don't like that. Poison could do a lot of damage. It does recurring damage. Tirnanog. Okay, these are the, the lands of the forever young. I, I'm glad that they're in because they got... These guys have um, a lot of um, nature gems. If I'm lucky, if I am really lucky, they're close. Because I would really like to take them out. They're, they're, they have, they're kind of modeled after um, Irish the, the folk mythology. Tirnanog is an Irish mythology. The land of the forever young. And then Kalasia. What is Kalasia? Oh, gosh, right offhand, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I can't. I can't remember right offhand what Kalasia is. I'm gonna. It's, you know, been a little while. Wow, this went down twenty. You know what? I am going to. I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys out. These guys are down enough. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these reports can be off. I don't actually have a scout in the province. I think if you actually have a scout in the province, the report is 100% accurate. But if they're just showing like they are now without with no scout in the province, I think it could be off by as much as 50%, I think, is how it works. So, for example, last turn this guy was 50, this turn they're 20. So that could be anything from like 25. If you double 25, it goes to 50 Half of 25 would go down to, to 12 or something. You know, or it could be 40. 40. Um, half of 40 goes down to 20. Half a double 40 goes up to 80. So I'm looking, I'm probably looking at something that's in the, I am guessing 25 to 40 range is what it really probably is, which is nothing but 
um, militias, light infantry, and archers, which I can take out fairly easily. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rename a couple of other guys. This guy's gonna be re renamed C. I'm just going right up the alphabet for my my uh, my scout warriors, and this guy will be D because I'm gonna have a lot of them. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the army setup. Okay, so this this is your army setup. This is one of the things. Okay, you do not have full control. 100% control in this game over your armies like you do in a real-time game. You know, in a real-time game, you just you got to click on the uh, click and try to select a square of guys and then try to move them. It's not like that in this game. It's much better the way it works in this game. It's just more realistic. And again, I use that term loosely, but it's frankly it's applicable. I mean, you don't have control as a leader over every single man on your battlefield, as you would do in a real-time game. It kind of gives you that capability. But what you do have is you can set a set of general orders to them, and you can and you can script, you know, what what your their plan is to leaders if they have a script like magic users. And that's reasonable. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so we got two groups right here. Um, Okay, if you see right over here in the left, it's telling you what the leadership of the guy is. Notice that this guy has two, two. That means he's got two. He's using two squads out of the two that is, is his max um, that he can. Two squads. Now, two groups. Look at the squad as a group. These are two groups. Two groups of guys. Each group has five guys, right? So they're two groups. He can, he can go up to two with no penalty. The max number of groups that a leader can have is five. That's pretty much an, it's an absolute maximum. This guy can have up to five groups if I wanted to split these guys. But what happens is if I go over two, then each one will start getting a minus one morale penalty. See, right now it's a zero, but let's say I created another one. It'll go to minus one now. Everyone will go to minus one. See that? Now I'm at minus one. If I created another one, it'll go to minus two. If I created another one, it will go to minus three, which is horrendously bad. But I could do that if I wanted. Um, obviously, I don't want to do that because I don't want to take a minus three morale penalty. But you can see he group up to five, five, and that's all it will allow me to do. That's the maximum number of groups that you can have. So I'm going to put these guys back the way I had them, and their morale will go back up. Now, this guy, if you notice, he can do three. He also gets, one of his special abilities is he gets a plus one morale. He's inspirational. So I can have up to three, three, and each one of those will get plus one. So that's why I want this guy to be leading. So, so this guy, he normally, his morale was normally 14. Now it goes up to 15. See if I, I right click. Uh, squad morale bonus plus one. His normal morale is um, 12. Friendly dominion. Squad, oh, whole, okay, there's a couple of other things which affect your morale. If you're in friendly dominion, where you have the, where your candles are white, all your guys will get a plus one. Conversely, if you're in enemy, a dominion where there's, where, which is black candles, you'll get a minus one. Um, you'll also get a plus one in your home province. And you'll get a, sacred units will get a plus one when blessed. That's in addition to your normal sacred um, bonus that I had when I set up those bless effects. You always get a basic plus one to your morale sacred units. Get a plus one to the morale when blessed. That's just a basic blessing bonus. So that's how that works. So let's go back to the army setup. Um, so what I'm going to do, how I want to group these guys. So I got spearman and javelinist. All right. Spearman and Javelinus, and I'm going to add my three giants to uh, my my um guys. These guys are going to be my tanks. I'm gonna I'm gonna they are just going to charge. All my guys are going to charge forward. Remember, I have that swiftness that I added to my um. I'm going to make use of that. I'm going to get a thirty percent movement bonus. My guys plus two defense, plus plus two reinvigoration. All those things are going to be made use of. Um. These guys are my spearmen. I'm gonna move. I want to move them up a little bit ahead of my um, giant. Why? Because I want him to draw the um, missile fire, and not as opposed to my 
Guys that fire missiles at the closest guy will be hitting him instead of my giants. That's what I want to do. And then these guys are my, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, <clears throat> um, javelinists. So I'm going to set them up. And they're gonna they're gonna throw their javelins. They get two javelins. If I right click on the guy, um, if I go down here, notice that it has a, he's got a range twenty. That's reasonably good. Um, but they only get two. Where does it say light infantry units and axes? Their strength of giant leather and throw javelins almost as far as a natural short bow would fire. Um, where does it say that they only have two though? I know that they only have two. Range eight, damage twenty two. It does twenty two. Oh, doggone it. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it says that. I know, but I know that they have two. Two javelins. Okay, so these are their stats, which I, I explained, and their special abilities. These are the weapons that they have, if I didn't explain this section. He's got an axe, which is like his secondary, his melee weapon. It's got a length, too. It has an attack of 10. Remember that the attack added to your strength and a die roll when you hit... Um, slash, it's got slash damage. Okay, okay, some weapons, there are weapons that have, um, blunt, slash, and, um, pierce damage. Um, depending on where you hit, you, you will get a, a different bonus. Um, I think blunt, for example, if you hit the head, if you, on the location, you will get doubled. I think if a slash weapon hits the torso, does it remove um, half of the protection or something? I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look it up. But each one of these we the, the weapon types, whether they're blunt, slash, or pierce, will give you a different kind of bonus. Or it, I should say it might give you a bonus depending on where you hit the guy. For example, the mace hitting the guy in the head will we'll double the damage. I think that's how... But if you don't hit it in the head, it doesn't double the damage. <laughs> if a slash hits you guy in the head, I don't think you get the bonus, but I'm not have to look at versus the pierce, too. Okay, so the javelin is a ranged weapon. It has an attack value of 8. Uh, and it does 22 um, pierce damage. It, it, it can do 22 with pierce. I'll, I will... Again, I'm going to look these two... the pierce and slash and how exactly how much other damage it does full leather armor his protection is nine so that's why he's got um he's got protection 13 uh, okay what else does he have shield i believe that's uh leather cap is nine nine so if i left click on their protection here his natural protection is current net is is five armor value of nine Head and body is all the same. Total protection is 13. So why is there a 13 versus 9? Is it adding the natural protection to the to the other protection? Sometimes you will have a, a hat. The, the cat protection is actually the same as the armor in this case. But so usually, sometimes it'll be different. If he was wearing a helmet, it might be 11 or something. So if you actually hit the guy in the head, it's going to use that armor instead of the, this armor. In this case, they're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Um, shield protection for... Oh, okay. Parry. Protection is 16. I think that's why it's it's up to 13 instead of... Um, I believe that's how... It's, so, in the last episode... So, the parry number... If you're rolling the attack versus the defense, and you roll greater than the defense plus 4, then you hit the guy but not the shield. So full parry, that's how the parry works. So remember, the, the, the attack versus the defense value was his ability, defense's ability to dodge. If you roll greater than his, his parry added to the defense, then you hit the guy without his shield. But if it's, with, if it's within the defense and the parry, then you hit the shield, then the shield gets added to the armor. That's probably where this extra protection is coming from. I think that's how it works. Or, you know, so the shield would be um, 16. Maybe it's prorated to 13 versus 9. I'm not 100% sure. I thought that it was just added. I'll, I'll, I will look that up for sure once I edit this episode. But that's more or less how that works. And, of course, these things add more encumbrance. So that's why he's at 5. 
encumbrance because he's carrying a bunch, bunch of stuff. One, two is base encumbrance, right click. His basic encumbrance is three, and he's got two. He's got five because he's adding two more. Three plus two is five. Um, so that's how that works. That's what these things are. Okay, so that's the javelinist. So I want him to chuck javelins. Okay, so right here we're going to set their orders. So this, these guys right here are the jav, javelinists, and it's showing you where they are. They're kind of off to the right. I'm going to left-click on the order. I'm going to click um, fire. What I want to do is I want to um, fire and keep distance. Okay, from the closest enemy. So they're just going to chuck their um, their javelins at the closest enemy. Okay. Meanwhile, these guys are going to charge. All I'm going to do is I'm going to attack the closest enemy. Then these guys are also going to charge forward. They're going to... They are going to charge the closest... I'm going to attack the closest enemy. Okay, so what should happen? These guys should be basically line up. They're going to... These guys are... The, the spearmen are going to draw the missiles of there if they have any so that these guys don't get hit by them. But these are the guys that are probably going to do most of the damage. So those are my armies. Now what I'm going to do... And now I want to set my leader. Okay, so that's showing me where the leader is on the battlefield. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep him here. Fido... You know what I'm going to do with Fido? I'm going to set him back here in the flank. Because <laughs> I want to get him ramped. He is also going to attack the rearmost enemies. I am going to take my my warrior... Um, my warrior... Uh, whatchamacallum? Some scouts that are now soldiers. And they're going to attack the rearmost enemy. So these guys are going to flank. These are going to. I'm going to use these guys like I would use... Um, cavalry. Same with the other guys. I'm going to set this scout up here. Doggone it! 30 minutes already! Come on! Okay, so we're going to attack rear. Let me just set that. Attack rear. I'm going to take D. Um, D up. I'm gonna, I want to group my guys that are going to be attacking rear. Set him to attack rearmost enemy. Okay, Bowser. Okay, I'm going to get to him in a minute. A, should he was already set. He should be attacking rear. So who did I miss? This guy. B, I'm going to set him up. He is going to attack rear. Okay, so these are going to be flankers. I'm kind of using them as I would use cavalry. Because remember, they're 30% faster. 30% faster. They get additional defense because they're going to be they're going to be blessed. And they get reinvigoration. These guys are going to get reinvigoration because they're, they're sacred also. Okay, so now we want to go Bowser. Bowser, I'm actually going to keep in the back. He's going to stay in the back. I am going to... I'm going to script. He's going to cast a specific spell. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Divine Blessing. Okay, so that is a battlefield-wide spell that is going to cast bless on the entire battle, battlefield. You need to be at level 3 to cast it, which, um, cause see, it, it's level three. It's showing you that's the requirement of the spell. These things down here are grayed out because he requires level four. This one requires level four. This one requires level level five. I'm not. I'm only level three, so I can't cast them. What do I want to cast the second round? Um, the second round, I want to care. Well, let's let's take a look at one of these sermon of courage. Okay, precision, 100, doesn't cost any fatigue. Um, area of effect, 10. Soldier's morale is increased. I don't see why uh, ashes to ashes. Um, effect one person, magic armor. Precision, so with this, smite's undead. Okay, I'm not against undead, so we don't need that. Smite demon, I don't need that. Holy word, holy word, the next... From the next true God able to protest, stun a sacred war before. Okay, I don't think they're going to have any um, sacred guys because this is an indie province. So, and divine heavenly fire. Okay, damage the priest cast in, in holy in, in a heathen is struck by a divine ball. That sounds good. Affects a person. Fatigue costs zero. It does ten damage. Armor negating. 
Uh, but magic resistance negates. That's kind of nice. What's its range? Um, it's got a precision of 100. Very nice. So I um, think that your does your precision... The spell has a precision of 100. Your guy also has a precision. I think that he adds to the spell precision, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um... I'll I'll look that up. If, if there's a spell add to the to his precision when for getting a total precision when casting the spell, it only hits one person. It's got a range of thirty. It's a pretty good range. So we're gonna use that. Why not? Let's cast that. So we're gonna cast the heavenly fire. We'll cast heavenly fire. Okay, so we're okay. We cast heavenly cast a specific spell, heavenly fire. I can I can script up to up to. Um, Five. I'm just going to cast the um, Heavenly Fire four times. Cast a specific. So that's what he's. That's what I'm scripting him. I'm, he, Divine Blessing it gets my bless down. And then Heavenly Fire. Four turns of Heavenly Fire. And then after that, it just... I don't know what, what it's going to do. What, what, um, we'll get him to cast spells. Why not? So he'll just do spells after that. Okay. So that's what he's going to be scripted to do. Okay, so that's everybody. Okay, that is everybody. And I'm going to take my army. <laughs> okay, so you notice I clicked some of these things light lit up in a way, I guess you could say. They're grayed out because nothing is none of my guys are selected. When I select a guy, it's showing you how far I can move, basically. So I can move this one guy one basically one spot because they're moving it. He can normally move more, but... These are enemy-controlled provinces, so you can't just move through multiple enemy. They're indies. You know, when you can move more than one spot, if they're basically, if you're, they're under your control. Or if you got some other special attribute. Okay, so let's... I'm going to select all my guys. What I need to do is shift-select, or is it right-click? Ah, right-click. Um, shift-select. Doggone it. That's obviously not it. Control, okay, control select. I hit control, I select all of them. Um, and then I left click will move. Notice all these guys are moving. In DOM 4, it used to be that these guys would sneak. Remember, the, some of your guys have, um, have that um, infiltrate stealthy bonus. Those guys can actually sneak. They can move into enemy control. Problem. They're the only, only guys with stealthy thing um, bonus can do that. So we're moving into this province, which is the weakest province. Uh, what does it have? It's got 2860 pop. We don't know how many supplies. 28 income. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, okay, it's not that good either. Okay, it's like the least income around here, isn't it? 35. You know, it's but it's a weak province. Why not? Um, once I get control of it, it'll start adding to my um, my 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 province. My province, my um, province stats. Um, one thing I did I mention last time when how the um, forts work. You got a fortification. It's got an administration of thirty. Okay, so what that means is for areas that you control, it's taking thirty as thirty percent of the amount of resources are being gathered from that. So remember these this 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 place has 18 resource 18 resources what's 30 percent of 18 it's what 6 6 12 18 roughly six so I will get an increase of six resources in my home province and I believe that my income will increase by a value equal to the administration divided by two as a percent um, I think I think that's how it works. So my, my, my administration value is 30, right? If I look on this, administration is 30. If I was to control this province, which has um, an income of 28, then the amount of income that will be added to mine would be my administration divided by 2 is a percent. So the administration is 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15 as a percent, 15 percent. So what's 15 percent of 28, okay, so I'm just going to put 15.15 um, times 28.15 times 28 equals 
4.2. So four. I should get an income of four from this province added to my province, my um, which is not a whole lot. Okay, this province isn't that good, but it's also weak. You know, and four is better than nothing. Obviously, this, this province is 35 is much better. Um, this province is 50 would be a whole lot better. Not only not only does it have a whole lot more income, but it's got that um, it's got the throne of ascension, which I really want, and I am going to get. Um, we're going to be targeting that before too long. But I'm going to take down the weaker ones first while my guys build up. Okay, so I've set these guys off to attack. Let's now go to my recruit because recruit, I, I didn't recruit my guys yet. We're going to recruit. Who do we want to recruit? we got 365 gold. Let's take another leader this time. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take another uh, Jotun Jarl here because I'm going to need a, a few of them. And another scout. Uh, I want to get combat units. In, I mean, I want to, my army is really strong. I'm focusing on combat units on the early phase of not mages. I'm still haven't built my first. It's going to be a little while before I actually build it. I'm, like I said, I want to get a Blitzkrieg rush force down. And you're not going to be doing a Blitzkrieg force with these expensive ma mages right now. So, And the price that I'm paying is I'm not getting any research right now. But that's fine. I mean, like I said, I have a plan. I'm going to adapt and overcome. Okay, so we got 180. Let's let's rank. I got enough Jarl Nephil Giants right now. Let's get some of these other guys. Um, I can actually get six spearmen. Let's take six of these. Oh, I'm running out of resources again. We can't actually get six. Okay, this guy's only five resources. So let's let's throw a couple of these in. Fifty. I can only get get one skin shifter. Let me see. Let's see how many we got. Let's take two of them, two of them, or one of them plus, oh, minus two. Okay, we'll take that. I'm going to rotate. I still got a minus two resource. That's fine, but I'm, I'm using, I'm maximizing the amount of resources that I'm, that I'm using. It's only minus two carried over to the next turn. Okay, so that'll be my, my buying for this, this turn. And we're going to go into this battle. I want to, I want to nitpick this battle apart um, when I go in, when when I do the turn. But I probably want to do that next turn. So let's just I will, I will nitpick the battle on the next episode. But let's just see what happens. I'm just anxious to see what happens. We're going to end turn. End turn. Come on, come on, baby! I am excited. Let's go. Let's crush the independence. Crush the independence. Come on, come on, come on. There was a battle in Grey Mountains. All right. <laughs> the province previously owned by it has been conquered by our forces. And I took no casualties. Look at this. Wow, I wasted this province. Um, okay, so you see a little sword icon here. And this is something new that they added in, in Dom 5, which is really, really cool. So that tells you how much these guys killed. So my hearse killed three guys. Remember, I casted those, um, those, um, that, what was it, um, Holy Fire or something? I can't remember the name of it. So he killed three, probably with the Holy Fire. My Jarl killed three. Remember, I set him to flank. The scouts killed ten. My four scouts, remember, they, they were ran. My Javelinus actually killed eleven. Interesting. My spearmen only killed two. And the my um what were three giants killed five guys, so they they wasted these things. <laughs> we're um okay. I'm gonna view the battle in the next episode. My the bell went off, and I just don't want to um take up too much time. I probably spent forty minutes. I will do one more episode, and I want to I want to nitpick this battle just so I can show show you what happened. I'm not gonna nitpick every battle. And I just want to do that on the probably the first battle and key battles, so you know for new people to, ex to show what's going on. So um, let's go back to the the winner wise mode, and I'll, I'll nitpick in the start of the next battle. We're gonna hit Alt, Alt Enter, Alt Enter to get to the winner wise mode. I am on winner wise mode. So this has been um, Corporal Kindle for Dominions as Nefelheim on Dominions. Five versus 
15 AI set to impossible. Um, I hope, and it has been episode three. This is the ending of episode three. I hope everybody has a great night. Um, it's only, what time is it? Nine, nine twenty. I will do one more, one more tonight. Get this, because I'm interested in, in nitpicking that battle. And, um, and, and then I will call it there. So I hope everybody has a great night. I'll see you here in a minute. <laughs> I'm still going to be up. So take it easy. See ya. Bye. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?